So today I'm going to give a quick overview about why you should care about cloud security, how Panther can help with improving your cloud security, and then we'll save some time at the end for Q&A. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to go over them then. So in the last month, we've seen a really large influx in internet traffic as the world has moved to remote work due to the coronavirus. And the result of this surge is needing to scale our backend cloud services, which in turn can increase our attack surface. Each year, we're seeing more organizations struggle to protect their businesses, especially at this new scale. And as a result, billions of PII records are constantly being exposed. To put this into a dollar and cents perspective, this costs trillions of dollars worldwide. And most of the time, these issues could have been easily avoided. So how do we put the proper detections and protections in place to prevent new breaches? These breaches are generally also happening because we're not really looking in the right place or at the right time, or we just didn't have the tools that made it easy. This is why we built Panther. So Panther is an open source cloud native SIM designed for modern security teams. When I say modern, I'm referring to powering your security detections around automation and code versus doing manual work. Panther has three main components. The first one is cloud security, which is used for detecting cloud misconfigurations that could lead to a breach, such as unintended publicly accessible resources like S3 buckets or VMs. The second component is analyzing our log data in these environments to identify either suspicious or malicious behaviors. And Panther is unique in that we combine both cloud security and log analysis into a single platform. This gives analysts a ton of rich context during an incident to better understand their environment. The last component that Panther includes is historical search, which is our data warehouse that powers investigations and allows us to perform security analytics on all of the data that we collect through log analysis and cloud security. So today I'm gonna to focus on Panther's cloud security component specifically, which works by first taking continuous snapshots, first taking baselines, I mean, and then continuous snapshots of our AWS resources. Using the Panther platform, we can use our built-in detections and Python policies to determine if these resources are compliant or not. And then we can send alerts to our team if we identify any issues. We can also uh, optionally apply automatic remediations that would just go out and fix those resources reactively. So let's review some concepts to understand how all of this works together. So the first one is a resource, which is a cloud component like a virtual machine, an IAM user, an EC2 instance, or in this specific use case, I'm, I'm using an S3 bucket. Panther scans all these resources and then models them as JSON objects, which you can see right here. The resources are then passed into policies, which are Python functions representing our desired secure state. This function will return true if our resources are compliant or false if they're non-compliant. And we can do any type of logic that we want in these policies, which is extremely flexible. And you can use all of Python's power to really determine if our resources are compliant. Uh, the final concept is an alert. So if we, if we see that our resources are non-compliant or not secure, we'll send notifications out to our team to go triage this, fix it, take a look, and remediate this security um, hole. So to enable this pipeline to work, we create a set of IAM roles that connects your Panther deployment to all of your other accounts. And Panther can support as many accounts as you have. You know, this could be tens, dozens, hundreds. Um, and the beauty with Panther is that it can really act as the centralized place for all of your resources. So this, this goes for searching, but also for evaluating if they're secure or not. Um, Panther also uses the information that you collect about your accounts, such as the account ID, the account name, in order to group these resources to better understand the posture across our various environments. Uh, and after onboarding into Panther, 
we'll perform a baseline scan to get you know the entire range of resources in the accounts and then we'll evaluate those resources against our built-in 100 plus python policies and these are all open source by the way so the code's freely available in github i'll show the links at the end um, but these policies cover best practices in amazon they cover the cis benchmarks which are just really great foundational checks that everyone should be doing to prevent most of the most of the common breaches that we see we break these out in specific categories uh, around you know is this policy around security control is it around protecting our data is it about availability etc and this is just a great place to start so after our detections run we start to populate our overview page and this overview page gives a breakdown of you know the, the policies that we have running and the resources in our system and it focuses our attention on the ones that have the highest failure counts so let's look at this example s3 bucket and let's go through a normal triage workflow so as an analyst what i would do is i would come to this page and this is if i'm just more generally browsing around and i want to just improve the overall system versus having a specific thing i'm looking for so let's go through this workflow so we click into the resource and now we get attributes about the resource um, along with you know which account it came, it came from what's the full id of the resource and all of the attributes associated with it and this allows us to understand the current state if we keep scrolling we see the associated failing policies and you know we get options for our remediation ignoring etc so let's hone in on one specific policy let's let's look at bucket encryption which is a really helpful data protection technique we can use. So clicking into this policy, we get all the context about why this policy exists. How do we handle failures? You know, what's our run book? Why does it, um, or how, how do we tag this policy? Um, and we can actually see the resource that we just came from here. So our cloud security component has this ability to backlink between resources and policies, which provide a really nice intuitive workflow. And we also can, you know, add remediations to our policies. We can add patterns for resources that we want to ignore. And if we want to actually just go through and edit the Python, we click our edit button at the top and then we're dropped into our policy editor. And the policy editor allows us to modify all the metadata that we just saw on the previous page. And it also allows us to just write Python purely in the browser. And we can ensure that this Python works by using tests. So if we keep scrolling down in the, in, in the editor, we have this ability to copy in a sample resource, which has all of the modeled attributes that we would want to determine, you know, is would this resource be true, uh, evaluate to true or evaluate to false? Meaning, is it compliant or not compliant? And all this, as I said, can be done in the browser. So let's walk through this process of writing a custom policy by looking at a specific scenario. So commonly in Amazon, it's an issue where a public AMI will be created. And if you're unfamiliar, an AMI is a snapshot of a running instance. And you can use these snapshots to create multiple other instances. It's generally a best practice if you have like a golden image, for example. It's a very common practice at, at scale. But if these images become public, they could inadvertently expose sensitive credentials or data. So we want to avoid this. So let's write a policy that would, that would detect this. So the first thing we start with is an example resource. So this resource itself is an Amazon machine image and we get all the context around, you know, what type of hypervisor it is, what's the ID, who owns it, what's the kernel and all of this context around the AMI. And the logic that we want to look at is, you know, the public attribute should be set to false and then we only care about AMIs that we own because in an account, you can have AMIs owned by other organizations. Like for example, Ubuntu is owned by the canonical owner. So in, in this specific scenario, this is actually the Ubuntu image. Um, but the account ID attribute is the account ID where the AMI actually originated from, which is your, the account that we're scanning. So we want to make sure that those match up because we wouldn't be, we wouldn't be scanning an account that is owned by an organization like Canonical. So we use this logic to build it into our policy. So our policy is just the Python function taking an argument of a resource 
And we're just checking these attributes based off of the logic that we just discussed. So we're saying public is not true and the account ID is equal to the owner ID. And this would alert on, on anything that we're scanning, on any accounts that we own. If we wanted to restrict it to certain accounts, we would just say, uh, you know, resource account ID is in our account ID list, which we can define as another Python variable. And we can test this as well. So what we can do is we can, we can put all of these attributes in place to mimic a non-compliant AMI. So if you look closely, you can see public is set to true and the account ID and the owner ID are equal. So when we run this, we see on the bottom that this public AMI check passed, meaning you know, we have confidence that our policy is gonna work when we actually deploy this. So after you save this rule, you know, a couple seconds go by, we run a scan on all the AMIs in your account. And then we see that, okay, now we have, we found three AMIs, two of them are public and one of them is not public. And this does not, uh, this is compliant. So we can take action however we want, um, or we could write an automatic remediation that would just go ahead and fix those. And I'll walk through how that works next. So for automatic remediation, what we want to do is, you know, maybe you don't want an analyst to have to go out of bound and, um, and fix this resource manually. We want to just, we want to just fix it with code so we can do this. So looking at another type of, um, resource, let's take an S3 bucket, for example, let's say we want to prevent these S3 buckets from being publicly accessible. There is a check, um, that, that Amazon added somewhat recently that allows, um, a protection to be put in place that would actually prevent the bucket from going public. So in this specific scenario, this resource doesn't have that set. So let's look at an automatic, automatic remediation that would actually set this. So in the policy editor where I was before, if you kept scrolling down past the tests, you would see this option to add a remediation ID. And the remediation ID has a set of parameters that determine how this option should be set. And if we look a little bit under the hood, we see that this is at the end of, end of the day, just a Python function that's running. So this is the actual remediation. This is how it looks. And we can see that these parameters get passed through an actual API call to put public access block. And then to understand a little bit deeper how this works, um, this workflow can be applied across resources in all of our different accounts or regions. And this helps a ton with centralizing all this logic into a single place for all of our accounts. So that's essentially that's essentially it for today. I mean, we we walked through, um, you know, the, the the components of how cloud security within Panther can help harden our environments. We talked through policies and how they work and how they ensure that resources are secure. Um, we talked through how, you know, you can use the built in hundred plus policies that come with Panther to establish a strong baseline. And then we talked a little bit about automatic remediation and how you can, you know, go through and fix insecure resources in an automated fashion. Um, all of these features that I discussed today are open source. So if you had to do our quick start guide, that will describe how everything works, how to get started and bootstrapped. Um, as I mentioned, if you go to if you go to bit.ly slash run Panther, it'll take you to our GitHub page if you want to browse around and look at the source code um, or maybe make a fork and you know send us a pull request for new remediation or something that you did that was helpful for you. Um, our docs also explain everything that I just went through in depth. It talks about the all the cloud security workflows, the onboarding, how to configure real time, how to configure scans, um, how to write policies in the UI and on the command line, et cetera. And then for the more advanced teams who need premium support or um, want a little bit more out of Panther, we offer a SaaS, uh, a SaaS hosted option. So we would run this for you. You don't have to configure Panther. We would take care of all the overhead. Uh, we also offer 24 by 7 support, uh, premium analysis packs around compliance frameworks like PCI or other frameworks like MITRE ATT&CK. Uh, we offer role-based access control, which allows 
you to really scale your Panther deployment and support for SAS logs and some other features. So if you're interested in that, um, you can just reach out to us at contact at runpanther.io. And we're actually also running a special promo right now for you know those of you who have attended this webinar. So reach out to us if you're interested in that and you'll get a special discount. So I want to save the rest of the time for Q&A. Um, does anybody have questions? Yeah, I'll just give a couple minutes. Looks like someone's typing. Okay, so question is, do you know what the typical consumption cost is on AWS when running Panther? Are you referring to logging or just doing cloud security? Because this, this is only for cloud security. For logging, yes, I do know. Oh, just doing cloud security, it's very cheap. I mean, we estimate if you're monitoring like 50 accounts, it would be about 500 a month in cost. But this is at a pretty good scale too. And a lot of the cost just comes from Dynamo. So it really, can, it really varies how big the environments are. It's more so around how many resources are you monitoring. And... Uh, Happy to chat more offline about that and provide some 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 more numbers. <laughs> yes, much cheaper than Trusted Advisor, and you don't have to pay for the premium support with Amazon. Um, the other actually advantage if you're comparing this to Amazon is, uh, for example, with Config, I believe a lot of those checks are regional, but um, with Panther, the beauty is that these policies and these remediations can be applied in every region and every one of your accounts from a single place. And that saves a ton of overhead on, on having to push new rules out. Does anyone have any other questions that I could help answer? Um, if, if anyone thinks of something after as well, um, we're always around in our open source Slack. If you just go to slack.runpanther.io. I'll just type that out. You can join our Slack channel and you can ask us questions. But if there's no other questions, I think uh, I think we'll be good. And then definitely go give it a try and, and give us some feedback. We would love to hear how everyone's using it. But um, thanks again, and we'll see you guys next time.